so here's the thing, and I tell people this all the time, right? Think like a business, operate like a business, act like a business. And that, for me, that means trademark, copyright, patent, everything. So everything on my site that is that is valuable to me, my logo, my slogan, like boldly different, that's, that's trademarked. And so I, I did all that because we're trying to look for unique things that we do differently. And so I came into this whole thing with a marketing background, right? I wanted to do something that was really bold, that really stood out because what I've learned over the years is people don't talk about boring businesses. They just don't. If you want people to talk about you, if you really want people to talk about you, if you want people to tell people that you are the best real estate agent, period, you have to give them something to talk about. What's up, man? I love the hat. My favorite. You? For you? Oh, yeah. oh, did you? That's not the same one that I saw a while ago, is it? It looks like I a have like three of them. I okay. have like three of them. Yeah, someone got this one for me. All right. I'm going to take a snapshot of it and send it to my team right now so they can just recreate this one. Uh, for those of you who are jumping on, welcome. Happy Friday. This is Brett Baker. Yo. Longtime friend. He's been in the industry for a while. Great background, by the way. Uh, hey, that, this is legit. <laughs> like, I mean, like, do like, I throw something back there? It's not like that, that's <laughs> real. <laughs> not a virtual one. It's not a virtual one. So, <laughs> it would have been great if I like broke the matrix right then. <laughs> dude, yes. Here's what I'm hearing, Brett, and you're hearing yeah. it too. Uh, we're hearing it in lab coats. I heard it this morning in lab coats. It's got it, it's getting a lot of love and a lot of hate. Uh, it's everyone else's fault. The market sucks. Team leaders, brokers, everyone. But it's not your fault. Okay, you're doing well. So we're we're doing okay. What is happening with your team or your area specifically? And I want a breakdown of your team too. Yeah, how yeah, many, yeah. How many pending do you have? Twenty three right now. 23. Oh, hold up, but you got to back this up though. I am, I am, but I wanted okay, to okay. start with that as a hook. Like, okay, okay. Yeah. So, okay, well, here, do you want, do you want numbers? Yes. Like, I'll give you numbers. Give me numbers. Uh, 23 pending. We've got, uh, so we do, we do, we do a pre list thing where we, we do a, uh, easiest way to explain this is in our market, if we sign a listing agreement, we have to go live with it in three days. We can do delayed marketing and stuff like that, but total pain in the butt. So, what we do instead is we do a promise to list where we basically get the person to agree to do, we have a program that we rolled out here that works really well. We can talk about that later. Yep. Um, but they they agree to list with us and then we have a bunch of work done to their properties um, and, and kind of tools like that. But we have uh, 12 promise to list sign right now, which means they're going to be listing within the next two to three months once we get some stuff done on their house. Um, and then we've got 61 buyer agency agreements signed. Six one, right? Six one. Yeah. Okay. All of those are all pre-approved already. They, they're ready to go. They're just waiting on the house. Okay. So. Okay. And then one more question before we yeah. track. Okay. Yeah. 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 What's the team look like? Yeah. Glad you asked. So uh, we have myself. Uh, we have a showing agent that we're turning into a buyer's agent. His his name is Wyatt. Two. Uh, we have my wife who is our coordin uh, client care coordinator. She's licensed. And that's it. That's what I thought. And that's <laughs> what All right. Now let's backtrack to okay. where it started. Yeah. Branding, Alaska, pink, yeah. the troubles, the fun. Right. Where did you start, dude? Okay. So let's just go to way back. So I sold my real estate business back in uh, end of 2018. I've signed a five-year non-compete that didn't allow me to do anything with real estate at all. Um, I could coach and that was pretty much it. So I had a commitment to to uh, to help other agents grow. And so I launched a coaching company. But in my head, man, like residential real estate is my jam. I love those clients. I love buyers and sellers. And I know it's kind of weird because everybody's like, you should get to a point where you build your business and you can step out and then you can coach other people and you can do all this crazy cool stuff. And it's like, that's not what I'm about. Like I enjoyed it for five years, but it was just because I couldn't work with clients for five years. The day... The right. day my non-compete expired, I was like itching to get back in. So it expired in July. Um, and I had been kind of planning this launch 
for like five years. And what I didn't want is I didn't want to go back into the state that I was in. I still have a non-compete technically in the state that I was in before. That will not go away. I can never do business there again. Okay. Um, and so I love Alaska. This is kind of my home. And uh, I don't really know anybody here. I know a handful of people at this point. I had a couple of coaching clients up this way. Um, but this is my paradise. I'm, I, I love that it snowed like eight inches last night. I think that's like the coolest thing ever. Uh, the flying up here is ridiculously fun. I mean, we do that kind of stuff with helicopters. So I have a lot of fun up here. Yeah. And so I, I thought about it like, okay, well, I'm going to launch a real estate business in Alaska. And everybody kind of made fun of me because they're like, dude, like you're starting Wait. from scratch, bro. And and who who the hell lives in Alaska, bro? Right, right. It's actually a really good market up here. It's like ridiculously good market up here. Yeah. Um, and it's ridiculously good because we get a lot of people moving in and out. We get a lot of military, a lot of oil, a lot of fun up here. A lot of really unique properties up here, which is rad. Um, but yeah, so uh, I built this brand up and I was going to totally rebrand everything. And then kind of as an honor to my, so my dad used to work for me. Uh, I hired him back in the day and uh, he passed away last year and kind of to honor my dad. My dad was always like the Baker team was such cool branding. And I checked with my attorney and they're like, yeah, you can run that again. I'm like, rad. So to honor him, we launched the Baker team again. So we have all of our old branding back. Um, and uh, yeah, we launched officially November 1st. Okay. So yeah. That's a month and a month and a week, a month and it's like two 48 weeks. days ago. Yeah. Okay. That's when the brand launched. Yeah. And you already have 61 uh, buyer, buyer agency agreement signed. Yeah. yeah. And 12, I'm going to list just around the corner. Yeah. 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 And what did you say? 21 pending? 23. 23 pending. Um, how do you get there, man? Where do, where do we start? to attempt to duplicate what you're doing. Yeah, so I mean, here's the thing. So when I first when I first launched this, and, and those of those that that kind of followed me for the last little bit, they're like, how are you gonna do, man? Like, are you just gonna go all in and go nuts? And I'm like, no, I was going to, I was gonna do like a multi-million dollar launch where I just like inundated the market really quickly and, mm -hmm. and just blew everybody out of the water. And I was like, ah, but like, I can't show someone later down the road when people are like, how'd you start your real estate business? I'd be like, I injected 3 million bucks into it. And they'd be like, that's not feasible to do anywhere. I'd be like, huh, sucks to be you. So I wanted to do <laughs> wanted to do something that was kind of more fun and, and something that would challenge me a little bit more. So I actually put a budget on myself initially. Whoa. And so I know this is weird, um, but I literally came in and my wife goes, hey, you should challenge yourself. I'm like, oh yeah? She goes, yeah, only put funds into your business that you earn in your business. And I was like, kind of late for that. Like I bought like three Mercedes that are all wrapped in our ugly pink. I wrapped a freaking helicopter. Like I'm like, honey, we're a little late for that. <laughs> she goes, cool. I'm good with you doing that. But like going with like lead generation and what have you, like you should start from scratch. And I'm like, okay. So I reached out to a, I, reached out to a couple of lenders that I was friends with. And uh, one day I started chatting with this one lender, a friend of mine, uh, and they're a national lender. Like they're very big. Um, they are in multiple States, but I'm like, dude, like talk to me about like, do you guys do lead gen? Like, what are you guys doing? He goes, Oh man, I do a load of lead gen. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah. And Alaska, Alaska was my primary market for a long time. And I'm like, tell me more. He's like, yeah, I've got these leads just sitting around. I'm like, you ran ads. He goes, yeah, I was going to like try to hand them off warm to real estate agents, but like, I didn't have time to convert them. So they're just sitting there. I'm like, how many do you have? He's like, I don't know, a couple thousand. Like you said, a couple thousand leads that you've never contacted. And he's like, yeah. Like, how old are they? He goes, I don't know, six months or so. I'm like, fucking give me that list, man. So he sent me like a CSV file and it was like 1100 and like, I have it down here. It was like 1126 leads that came in okay. and I called every single one of them. I didn't use AI. I didn't use smart plans. I didn't use an ISA that was out of state. I called personally on a sync on a cell phone, not a, not a dialer. I literally called every single one of them. And, and my, my numbers were, were nuts. And I'm trying to find those for you right now. Cause I have a ton of these numbers coming in. You texted me when you finished calling them and you're yeah. like, well, actually you said, 
I'm going to hand call these people. I'm like, what do you mean? Like you and you're um, and you said yes. And I said, okay. And then yeah. after you're done, you gave me the stats and I was like, yeah. Do you have those up? Because I thought I had them in front of me. I I don't. Um yeah, let's see if that will pull. I sometimes oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got them right here. So I'm sorry, it was uh in six days. So it was 1,764 leads, is what I got. Um, and 866 of them were not interested. Okay. 621 are now in my database on a property drip. Um, and they had all given up because the market was too hot for them. So basically they were frustrated and they were like looking at one time, but they'd never been connected to an agent. Um, so those 621 are actually back in my database now. And like, if we look at where they're, they're falling on, on our, we use lofty. And so if you look at where they are in our database, they're moving up constantly. And so okay. those are going to be pretty primed to do something here pretty soon. Uh, 216 bought a house, condo, land, or whatever. Um, that was kind of ridiculous. I was like, holy crap, that's a lot of people that missed out. Like he generated all these leads and they bought. Yeah, hit me. They uh, This person generated those leads from, again? Where? Yeah, he's a lender and he did it on like PPC. Got it. Okay, continue. Yeah, but a lender did this, which is just wild to me. Usually agents think that they're the ones doing the, the lead gen, but lenders do it too. Um, 61 are active, right? They're looking to buy within the next three months. They're pre-approved. Same lender pre-approved them all which is great. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we'll just use more, more stats here. So uh, over the last 12 days, um, Wyatt and I have done 52 showings. We've written 12 offers. Um, nine people that we're showing homes to right now have to sell before they buy. Um, it's been, dude, it's been absolutely bananas. But here's the coolest part. So out of the 621 that are in my database right now, 94 of them are actually in another state looking for property right now. And we've already teed them up with other agents. And so some of our pending stuff we've got right now, we've also got a bunch pending right now with uh, out of state one referral. That's crazy, man. It's, it's, it's a little, it's a little nutty. Um, so basically at this point, we're sitting with about two, about 3.9 million in sales volume in the course of about a week and a half. That's really good. All right. So you went out to get it though. That list that you got. Yeah. For- or lender yeah uh, by the way if you're listening in you probably know a lender that's doing nothing with their database so you can yeah. request to call them and liven them up again uh, did you hand dial those one by one or did you put them on a dialer in lofty how that hand work? dialed hand dialed one by one was it hand just dialed. calling or did you also text them and started you know? started with calls only started okay. with calls only so i called every single one of them um, and then, then basically those that didn't respond, um, mm-hmm. I put them in and I, I put them on, they put them on a drip and it was a long-term drip that I, that I dealt with them. What actually got everybody reactivated here within the last, uh, I ran it, I ran it kind of middle of, of November. I do, I have a reactivation smart plan that I, that I created a while back that I run. Um, it's a couple of days. It will work on any platform, but it's primarily set up for, for Chime slash lofty okay um but as my reactivation smart plan i i put the people that didn't really respond i put them on that um i i got quite a few responses off of that <laughs> In, inundated my 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 poor friend wyatt <laughs> that's, fine, man. Uh, that's great so, yesterday, yesterday um when we were cold calling as a group right yeah. um at the end of calling online leads uh chess list is just sold I, I wasn't having very much luck and I got frustrated. I was like, I'm just going to mass text everybody who hasn't. Right. For a while. And I sent out a mass text in Lofty and I said, hey, I'm not sure if you're around this weekend, but I have a list of open houses for you. Do you want me to text it or email it to you? Yeah. And then started coming in through the night and I'm like, okay, good. Now I feel, I feel like I did something. Yeah. Uh, that works, Brett. I love that you have these automations in place. Let's talk about your branding because oh it stands do you, want, do you want to show you some wanna, of it i want to see this man because you went you went all in it's not like you tipped it into this you're like i'm just gonna do it right yeah so here's the thing and i tell people this all the time right think like a business operate like a business act like a business and that for me that means trademark copyright patent everything so everything on my site that is that is valuable to me my logo my slogan like boldly different that's that's trademarked. 
And so I, I did all that because we're trying to look for unique things that we do differently. And so I came into this whole thing with a marketing background, right? I wanted to do something that was really bold, that really stood out, because what I've learned over the years is people don't talk about boring businesses. They just don't. If you want people to talk about you, if you really want people to talk about you, if you want people to tell people that you are the best real estate agent, period, you have to give them something to talk about. So, well, we did. Uh, here, let me just pull up my... Uh, let me pull up my website so people can see it. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is our website. And here, let me actually reload this because the first shot's actually really cool. Um, so I wasn't kidding when I said we wrapped a helicopter. Um, we did. It is on our brand. Um, and so we do fly this around a lot of places, mainly because we can get to properties that other people can't. And in Alaska, most of our properties are off the road system. So we have bold copter to get us to where we need to go. Um, we also went through and we uh, we can just keep coming down here. Uh, we wrapped a bunch of Mercedes that are all also ugly pink cars. You can kind of see it in the background. I have better pictures of it. Um, we do a certified pre-owned home program up here, which is how so many people are listing with us right now. We can talk remember, about that. We talked about that two, was it two, three years? Who was, dude, I remember that. I've been talking about this for years and people just kind of gave me crap about it because yeah. they're like, that will never work. It's like, dude, I got I got sellers lined out the door ready to I use this program. That. Um, And then we came down and we, you know, we're unique property experts. So we have a variety of tools that we can use to get us to where we need to go. Remote properties, airstrip homes, float accessible properties. We, we can access all of that. Um, but that is, I mean, we, we went all in. Everything matches. Everything looks the same. We're not afraid of, of showing people what we're capable of. So we put our entire marketing plan on our website. Every single bit of it goes on our website because we're not afraid to show people what we do because, and I can't stress this enough, Everything is patented and trademarked. <laughs> so, so people can't run it. <laughs> um, but but we thought about that before we well, came into it. Right. It's also in the presentation too. So you, yeah. you actually mention it and here it is, right? You're showing yeah. it. A lot of people won't even have it in a place where people can take a look at it or use it quickly like you do. And right. the other thing is you're mentioning it again. A lot of us don't. We haven't even pieced it together, right? Right. So right. even if it's, and I'm not saying yours is because it's not, but even if another agent has the exact same 20 step process, the fact that you're talking about it, putting it someplace, itemizing it, and then sharing it and talking about it over and over, it makes yeah. a difference. I love that, Brett. It's, it's one of those things where, and I tell people this from the get go, if you want to build a really great real estate business, you, you have to start <laughs> You have to start with a plan. And I see so many agents trying to get into this industry. And, and so many people are suffering right now. And, and they're suffering because they never took the time to build out a plan. And so everything that we do is, is structured around our business model. We know what we're going to do. We even know now where we're generating leads from. We also know where we're going to put our, we know the difference between marketing and branding. And we use the two very appropriately. Um, I see a lot of people that'll be like, well, that that lead source doesn't work. It's like, yeah, it's not a lead source. It's a branding source. There's a big difference. I love brand awareness. Brand okay. awareness for me gets people talking. Here, I'll show you else another let's, one. Um, let's talk about that right after you show me this. Yeah, so so here's, we're mobile billboards, basically. So we have the, the little soul that our marketing team drives the soul, but we have a couple of Mercedes. They all look identical. Um, and, and so we've, we've taken it to the point where we want everything to look the same. We use a, a principle called the Bader Meenhoff phenomenon, which if you look it up, it has a lot to do with like the RAF back in the day, but there's much, much better use of it these days. Uh, it's known as frequency illusion. And so when people see our ugly pink cars driving around and then they, they hear about our ugly pink cars on our radio advertisement, and then they see our ugly pink signs in their yards, like ugly pink starts being associated with us. And it's not color, like you can do that with anything. If you love orange, you can make it work with orange. If you're a, a, a huge fan of green, you can make it work with green. I absolutely freaking love pink, which- Dude, that pink, is, that pink is awesome. That's hot Thanks. pink. I, <laughs> that love, is... I love that pink. 
It's 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 my favorite color. Pink and black are my favorite colors. Everybody gives me a hard time for it, but it's true. They are my favorite colors. Um, and so everybody's like, why? Do, there has to be a reason you use pink. And I'm like, no, I legitimately just love the color. <laughs> All right. So now let's talk about how you're using the branding on social. How yeah. are you, how are you using it and how are you getting people into your pipeline, into your uh, funnels? What does that look like? Sure. Sure. So, so we are, we are now in the point now where we are running, we are running ads officially. So we are doing lead generation and we're doing brand awareness. So, so we've kept the two very separate lead generation is being done through Google pay-per-click and we use Brian short for Google pay-per-click. Um, there is only one person that I'll use. Yes. I know all the other sources out there are great, but I use Brian Short right now. We have about a 4,200% ROI with, with Brian. And so yeah. we're pretty happy. Listen, um, if Brian yeah. did, if Brian also did it for KV Core, we would have already sent him more business, but you know, right, right. He does it for a few. So he is, uh, he does a great job with, with what we're doing. Uh, and we're, we're a big fan. Um, so we've got him that is doing our Google pay per click. And that's pretty much our lead gen at the moment. I don't put really a lot of focus on social media. I know it's there. Um, we have a pretty good following. I think we're at 20, 2,700 followers on our social media right now, um, which again, launched 45 days ago. <laughs> um, so we got a lot of people really quick because we're we're very vocal about what we do and we tell people to follow us on there. We put good content on there, that kind of stuff. I like um, however, brand awareness is where it's at for us. Um, because I, I don't know if you noticed, we drive mobile billboards everywhere we go. Of course. So yeah. what started with us was we had a radio station, uh, and they in town and they did this thing. They did like a morning segment of like the weird stuff you see while driving. And someone was like, yeah, I see these ugly, like ugly, like black and pink cars that are driving all the time. And this was not paid for. I want to make this really clear. I did not pay for this at the time. Did I remember you sent it to me? I was like, what? Yeah. I know what yeah. Saying. Not paid for. They just, they just saw the cars and they called in for the weird stuff they see on the road. Well, this DJ got like really into it and he started like stalking us, like trying to figure out who we were and what we were doing because they had like multiple calls at this point. Finally, someone calls in like, I think it's a real estate company. Anyways, they did this whole spiel until one morning. I get a phone call. It's really early. It was like, I was at the gym. So I think it had to have been like 5.30 or 6 in the morning. And so I get this phone call and they're like, hey, like, stop by k Whale Studios. And I'm like, who the f is this? And they're like, we just want to talk to you. All right. So I stopped by like after the gym and the, the studio is like wide open, but nobody's there. And so I hear a voice. And I just I keep walking down the hall and I like open the door and these two dudes are on the air when I walk in the studio and they're like, Hey, I'm like, uh, hi. And they're like, are you the ugly pink car guy? That's so funny. And the so it's gone, it's oh. gone pretty viral at that point. Um, they talk about us now on multiple stations, which is interesting. Um, but they just wanted to know what it was that we did and why we're doing what we're doing. And it's really simple. We're here to be transparent. We're here to do really amazing customer service. We're focused on customer service. Um, and we use the tagline boldly different. And yeah. we use that because it, it defines everything that we do. Everything we do is different. So, yeah. Even if some of it's the same, though, you yeah. talk about it and you put Correct. it in front, which I love, man. And I think yeah. it goes back to what you said at the beginning, which was, You've got to give people something to talk about. Exactly. And, and if you if you give people something to talk about, they're going to talk about you. If you don't give people something to talk about, you're essentially a secret agent. And so my my big thing that I tell people, especially especially other agents, is if you if you want to do more business in 2024, you need a clear definition of what you do differently than everybody else in your marketplace. And you need a clear definition of, of the direction that you want to go with your real estate business. And I tell people all the time, like you hear them like, hey, what's your target audience? I'll ask all the time, like, hey, dude, what's your target audience? And they'll be like, uh, anybody that answers the phone? It's like, dude, that's not a target audience. Because I have, and I'm, I'm not doing, I'm not saying this to brag. I have an unlimited budget, unlimited. I can spend any amount of money I want on my budget. 
and I can't target everybody because the, it, it would it would wipe. There's not enough frequency to be able to do that. So what you need is you need a niche market that you can get in front of and have a high frequency to get in front of them. So if you're like absolutely like you're the biggest dog fan in the world, you love dogs, okay? Go find other people that absolutely love dogs and niche down and be like the real estate agent that loves dogs. Go to animal shelters and like, like I don't know, showcase animals at the animal shelter. Put those on your social media. Become like obsessed with dogs. Like sponsor dog parks. That's another one you can do. Like be around. If you're a huge dog fanatic, be around dogs. If you are a back or if you are a diehard snowboarder or skier and you live in a ski town, cool. Define your target audience. I'm a diehard snowboarder. I'm not. I'm a skier. Sorry. Sorry, snowboarders. But let's just say you were a diehard snowboarder. Go find people that are snowboarders and connect with them. Start start group snowboard activities. You can do that all day long. Skiing, same thing. Cross-country skiing, same thing. Um, Surfing. Same pickleball, thing. dude. Pickleball, pickleball. dude. You know I love pickleball. I I I don't play pickleball. So so here's here's free advice to anybody that that plays pickleball. Do you know why pickleball is such an incredible sport? Tell me. Older people do it. So you you I mean like I my my buddy Jeff calls me the other day. He goes, "Hey, you want to come play pickleball with me?" I'm like, "What the f- is pick- like? Why does everybody love pickleball?" He's like, "Dude, you'll learn it really fast. I need someone to play with." I'm like, "Fine." So I went and played. Do you know who was there? Dude, we're talking like 50 plus. Like we're talking retirees are playing pickleball. Yeah. Who has property to sell right now? Who has tons of equity in their property right now? I'm like, dude, this is like a gold mine. I'm not going to play. I'm not going to go play pickleball because I want to pick up those clients because I don't play pickleball. (laughs) It was very evident that day that I do not play pickleball. (laughs) I like it, man. But that's a huge demographic. Yeah. Lead source. Yeah. Uh, give me give me like your top three lead sources right now. Right now it's uh Google pay-per-click is number one for me. Um yep. most most of our most of our leads at this point, if they don't come through Google pay-per-click, they're coming directly to our site because I mean, so it's direct. So we only have two right now. Perfect. And when you say going to your site, they're coming in through SEO and through radio ads or the right. cost and the branding. I put no, I put zero effort into SEO. Like if you went onto my site right now, I, I guarantee you people would be like, Brett, your SEO is horrible. I'd be like, I don't really give a shit. Like I don't, I don't care um, because that is not my main source. My main source of people coming in, they see it on the cars, they hear it on the radio, they they hear people talking and now it's uh, more neighbor of neighbor marketing than anything else. Um, even though I'm very fresh in an area where I don't know anybody, neighbor of neighbor marketing grows very, very quickly. Um, we send a boatload of direct mail, a boatload of direct mail. So anytime we close property, buy or sell, we're sending out postcards to the nearest neighbors. Um, that that has gotten us quite a bit of traction back to the site. Um, and my big thing is once you land on my site, uh, and you are in my target demographic. I don't retarget to everybody, but I retarget to those people that are in my vicinity that I have identified as a target audience. Mm-hmm. They will get retargeted too. And so if you if if someone in my area that is in my target demographic lands on my website, they're going to get retargeted too for 180 days on every every form of media. On when they're searching on online, when they're on their social media, when they sit down to go stream. Uh, any any TV source that they stream, they're going to get my stuff. I like that, man. I like how the the secondary one is is diverse. It's just attraction. Yeah, yeah. It's what's curiosity. Your, what's is your what website? It is. Boldlydifferent.com. Boldly, somebody asked. Different. Yeah, boldly different. Oh, I'm not even in chat right now. Maybe I should be in Q and A. No, it's not in here, dude. It's in the oh group. Uh, I um. Got Perfect. But yeah, it's it's just one of those things where if you build if you build a great brand, um, there's so I, I have a coaching client down in, in Florida. I'm going to give him a shout out right now because the dude the dude gets it right. So I I coach a lot of people, and and this uh, Michael Hollow down in Florida he he started uh, Blue Line Realty down in Florida, and they're they're about to expand into other states. Um, 
when you think blue line, what do you think of? A ship, some type of a a, a ship, a, a ship liner, a airplane. Think, made. think like thin blue line, right? It's yeah. police, police, paramedics, oh. first responders, yeah, right? Yeah. So he hires all, like basically all of his agents are like retired uh, law enforcement of some form or yeah. related to some form of law enforcement. And yeah. so when you think about it, their their goal is their their slogan is protecting the community like because they are they're 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 protecting the community of real estate and it's really cool um and so like he's one that gets it he just gets it um he built an amazing brand uh another guy another coaching client of mine uh Nick out in uh Holland uh Holland Michigan this guy he he teamed up with a uh a, a very well known local agent that had been that had been in the area for for decades and everybody knew him as jerry i mean his name's jerry everybody knew jerry he would go sit at his donut shop he would have his donuts and coffee in the morning and everybody knew he was in real estate and i, I told nick like dude you need to pair up with jerry <laughs> like somehow you need to pair up and so he shut down his entire brand and rebranded himself to partner with jerry with jerry and co and and that now he's tapping into this huge resource of this this agent's database and this agent's client base and and his social network. And so my point is these people that have that have taken these initiatives and have started doing good brands, they're going to do better and they're going to survive what's coming in 2024. Yeah. I love that, man. Listen, if 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 you heard anything here that that you actually should be paying attention to. It goes back to first off, all of the things that you're actually doing, right? You're not just sitting, you've taken a lot of action, massive yeah. action to make sure that you're succeeding in, in real estate. But for me, it was you've got to give people something to talk about because that that actually touches everything that we do, whether it's social media, right, in person, mailing, open houses, it doesn't matter. And if yeah. you start with that. You start rethinking. Wait a second. How am I? How am I showing up, right? And do people even care? Am I stuck in the middle where nobody's talking about me? Yep, I love that. It's man. it's one of those things, man, that I've I've learned over the years that if you get people talking, and then you 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 need to be. And this is something that I've I've just seen such an interesting. Is it, real estate's so weird? There's no transparency between buyer and seller, between between agents. There's no transparency. And 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 that's what we're trying really hard to be. And I tell my clients up front, like, hey, there are going to be times where I'm going to tell you something and you're really not going to like to hear it from me. And, and you're probably going to get pissed at me. And I'm okay with that because my job is to be transparent with you. My job is to keep you informed. And so we built our entire business around transparency and keeping people really, really informed. Um, to, to give you an update. So, so today is Friday, right? So mm -hmm. every Friday I do Friday updates with my clients that are under contract. Uh, it's not, I don't, I don't make my assistant do it. My, my wife slash transit transaction coordinator slash client care coordinator. She doesn't do that. I do it. I do every single one of them. I, it's manual follow-up. It is me telling them where their transaction is every Friday. And I do that every Friday because once we get someone under contract, I don't care if you use a TC that's remote or a TC in-house. The problem is there's what I call the cone of silence, where it starts once you're under contract, you clear inspection, and then it's like, poof, real estate agent disappears, and then, poof, magically reappears four days before closing. That whole period in between there, it's like, dude, do you talk to your clients? They're like, no, they're under contract. I can't do anything to help them. I'm like, you can't do anything to help them? You can tell them where their file is. You can tell them what's going on so they understand how much goes into this behind the scenes. Why don't yeah. you fill them in on that? And, and people are just like, nah, I don't need to do that. I do that every Friday with every single person that we have under contract. Listings do the same exact thing. Like, hey, here's what we're strategizing going into this weekend. Here's what's happened over the week. Here's what you can expect going forward. Here's what we're kind of expecting to see by Monday. That kind of stuff. Keep them very oh, well educated. Here's what didn't happen, right? Oh, exactly. hey, you know what? There, there's no update, but here's what we're continuing to do. I right. If people, if you're having a hard time getting sellers doing a price drop, <clears throat> you're not communicating enough. You're just not. Because if you were communicating enough, you would be able to have that. You They would have seen the trend coming. Yeah. Like, hey, we're not getting any showings. Hey, we're not getting any showings. 
Hey, we're not getting any showings. Hey, we're not getting any showings. Hey, we should do a price drop. <laughs> but what I see instead is, and I've been this seller before. Remember, I've sold hundreds of properties of my own that are outside of the area using other agents. And I get the radio silent treatment from them all the time. And it's like, yo, what's going on? And they'll be like, oh, we should probably do a price drop. I'm like, why? How many showings have happened? Oh, oh let me find that information for you. You should know that information. I agree, man. So that's right. that's what we're running. I and like it's it. a little different. All right. So I'd love to talk to you again in like three, four months just to see now. Yeah. Because 45 days in isn't giving me a, a big enough picture, but I know you're already on fire. So, well, let's, let's do that. What if we check in every, every what if we check in like every two months just to see okay. what's going on, how things have changed because right seasonality, right? It's funny. It's really funny right now because I show up to the office every morning by I'm late today. Like say I'm on the call with you guys. So I'm at I'm at my my I have a studio here that I do a lot of recording in. So I'm here with you guys. Normally I'm at the office by 7 a.m. every single morning. So I hit the gym, leave the gym at like I go leave my house at like 4 30, hit the gym. Uh I'll I'll do that for a little bit. Some days I'll go rock climb afterward and then hit the office by I'm there by seven. And what's what's truly entertaining is is we have a pretty big office and there's a lot of agents in there. But what's amazing to me is that the people that are complaining that they're not doing any business, I never see mm -hmm. them at the office. Their office is always empty. Their computers are never there. Uh, pretty much the entire state of Alaska went to Hawaii last week for, for a bunch of things they could have just done online. They went to the CE course in Hawaii. And I'm sitting there, they're like, are you coming to Hawaii with us? I'm like, why the f would I go to Hawaii? It's busy as right now. I'm working my ass off right now. They're like, oh, well, don't you want a break? No, I don't want to break. I want to keep going with this. Oh, so got no one shows up. But if you want to do more business, show up every day. Treat this like a business. And you will close more business. Thanks, Brent. I love that. This is good. Sorry, I'm all fired up this morning. Lots of coffee. This is good. I like this. Uh, if you have questions, Brett, how do people get a hold of you? Uh, easiest, easiest way to get, I mean, if you, if you go to our site, boldlydifferent.com, you can contact us through there. Um, that's the easiest way. Um, if someone really wants to email me, uh, you could do my emails on there as well. That's, that's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Perfect, dude. I'll put it up. Thank you yeah. so much. Let's check in again. Agreed. Maybe you've added a jet or a boat or or something else that's pink and black, dude. <laughs> yeah, do you know the Do you know the saying here? The saying The saying is always have always be the person that has like one set of the toys. So we're really set on aviation right now, right? Uh, all of my friends have boats, and so if they're like, "Hey, can we take the helicopter somewhere?" It's like, "Yeah, hop in. I'll take you wherever you go." Summertime, it's like, "Yo, man." We're going fishing and they're like, yeah, we'll take my boat. I'm like, that's a great idea. <laughs> so no boats, no boats for me. I'm not a car guy or a boat guy, uh, only aircraft. That is. So thanks, brother. Yeah. Uh I need to still take you flying. You had an option. Like I we were know. there that day. I remember, I remember. I was like, I'm thinking, like, man, he's not gonna go with me. And you didn't. So we just have to get you up to Alaska and I'll take you up here. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Talk and soon, buddy. <laughs> I need a hat, so I have to keep on remembering that. I have to, just but, text, just text me. I'll send you die, one. But did you yeah. die? Thanks, everyone. Brett, thanks I'll for doing this.